Uh, yeah, I'm Lynn Rowland, the committee administrator. Uh, Wayne Forrest, localities and policy manager and area committee uh, coordinator. Catherine Hughes, principal planning officer. Thank you very much. Um, before I actually start today's meeting, um, we had some tragic news last week. A former colleague on here, um, Councillor Tonya Barton, sadly passed away with, um, uh, it was COVID, and obviously I just wanted to pay my respects to her tonight by saying how what a fantastic individual she was. She was very, I remember when I first came on, she was a very hard-working counsellor uh, for her residents, and as an individual as well, she was a really nice, kind person. So obviously condolences to her mother, um, from Bradfield and really our committee councillors and colleagues on here. I don't know if Councillor Hanif or Councillor Iqbal would like to say anything. No, no, <coughs> I totally agree with yourself. A good person. <coughs> used to live on Hayek Street. I you know, used to meet her regularly. Uh, and exactly what you say, I just, obviously, everything. Uh, um, <coughs> so sad news. So sad news. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hanif. Um, the next item is public question time. However, I don't think there's any uh, members of the public on here or any questions. Um, I do want to bring something up on here, and I think colleagues will obviously um, support me on this. I think everyone is well aware of the issues we're having on Burnley Road with speeding cars and um, speeding cars, really. And the issue is that nothing seems to be done. Only a couple of days ago, there was an accident just near Clegg Street. Car turned upside down. And then there was the other one where um, four o'clock in the morning next to Casterton Avenue. But the problem is that the, the cars start racing from where Reedley Court is. And to be quite honest, I think all councillors have been contact, contacted by residents who are just so fed up now um, that nothing seems to be doing. We can't blame the police, obviously, because... They can't be there all the time. But I think it's a request to Lancashire County Council. I'm not, uh, my hopes aren't high with that, but something needs to be done by County Council, whether they change the way the road layout is or something, something urgently, drastically needs doing. I don't know what colleagues feel on that. No, Chair. <clears throat> yeah, I, yeah, I totally agree with you there. It's, it's, to be honest, day by day, it's not just Burnley Road, but it's all the other ones. But Burnley is the main one. Uh, uh, from Castleton Avenue over to Weedley Road, it's a uh, uh, four cars can race there, yeah. and 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 day or night it's getting worse. It's getting worse, <laughs> even in the day. They, obviously, there yeah. are cases. So it's I totally agree. You need to something needs to happen. County unfortunately do not listen. We I've I've emailed them, contacted them. I I, I know David Walker is on our behalf. You have everybody else has. Uh, and, and no response. <clears throat> they don't even return the emails. So what? What do we? What do you recommend? What? What should we do then? To, to, I, I've got, I mean, because sorry, I thought, that's the the county councillor for that area. It was councillor county councillor Wakeford, was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. We haven't got a county councillor there. Yeah. That's the problem. And the other one, obviously, we can speak to is councillor Iqbal, who's obviously. It's not his patch, but we, <clears throat> we can ask him constantly. Yeah, but I think something needs to go to the highways uh, manager and the portfolio for highways as well, asking them either to even just come on to a, uh, a Teams meeting with us what, uh, in four weeks' time to explain what is there anything they're going to be doing. Yeah, fair point. Yeah. Can, I also, can I also raise another one, <clears throat> which is similar to this, is the traffic lights by field chair. Uh, the timing uh, yeah. needs to be looked at because, to be honest, the, the amount of knee misses and how how uh, an accident hasn't happened, uh, a major exam, I'm just shocked uh, because quite a few residents are complaining about the timing because I've seen personally people going through it uh, and, and, and between one side and the other side, there's only about three seconds or four seconds, not much. So that is a, uh, obviously something that needs to look at. Chair, can I come in on... Uh, yeah, of course you can. can't speak I about. think, firstly, Chair, on the speeding, um, I think it's right. We, I think since I've been on this council, it's been a big issue. We've been having meetings with um, 
LCC with the residents, with the police. And it's very little that has been done. And I'm not sure what we can do. That's, I think, our hands are tied in that sense. Um, <clears throat> but I think if we can explore it further, but I think something really constructive needs to happen. I think it has to be a multi-agency response to this um, uh, because it's one uh, organisation can't do everything, either the police or the county council or the uh, Pendle council. Uh, but I think we need to get our heads together and try to get to the bottom of this because the situation is getting worse, if anything else. And then turning to the other point about the traffic lights, I think it's been probably around a year, January, February last year, when these were installed. And I raised this, if you remember, Chair, at the yeah, meeting. Yeah, yeah. And we had a response, actually, from LC I think Lynn wrote to LCC, who then provided us with a response. We were due to have a, a site meeting with LCC, but then the lockdown happened. That was back in March. The reason I remember it was in March, because it was shortly after the lockdown. So it might be worth uh, if we could um, try and uh, get that meeting. I, I have been contacted by a few people, but not as much, to be honest, as perhaps in March last year. I think the problem had improved. And we got the email from Lynn, I think, where they said that just a few hundred yards above, there was there are some sensors placed. I think that was the response that Lynn got from LCC. I've noticed them. I think it must have been improved, but it can still get better. So it might be worth resurrecting that email, Lynn, and then perhaps saying, if we, you know, could we have a site visit to see what actually has been done since then? Because I know the sensors have been placed, but I don't think that's enough. It's so not perhaps if we could. Yeah. No, it's not helping. Yeah. And obviously, it's not as bad as before because there isn't as much traffic. But when hopefully things get better, it's only going to get worse, isn't it? Yeah, true. That's fine. Is that okay, Lee? Uh, yeah, that's fine. We might have a problem again site visit wise because of the restrictions, but yeah. um, I'll, I'll contact them. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. The next item is um, the minutes. Are we happy to approve and move them, Councillor Iqbal? Yeah, yeah, I'll move them, Chair. I'll second them. Um, progress report. Obviously, the planning application, uh, which went to Policy and Resource, was approved. Um, obviously, the environmental blight, it's, um, as, this, as the car park is private and the council cannot take the lead in investigations or the removal of flight waste, but assistance can be provided if evidence can be found. That's okay. Are we happy to move the progress report? Yeah, move it, Chair. Yeah. yeah. Se second, Councillor. Um, next item is community safety issue and police matters. Lumen, I don't think we've got anybody here from the police, have we? No, we haven't. All right, no problem. Thank you. The next item is planning applications. The first planning application is change of use of agricultural land to horse grazing and erection of a stable building and outdoor manning at land to the south of Motway Bridge, Clitheroe Road, Briarfield. We have a Mr. Alan Kinder who would like to speak. Mr. Kinder? Thank you, Chair. Um, Good evening, committee. Um, the application before you this evening comes with a recommendation of refusal, principally on the grounds of scale and isolation in the green belt. By way of background, then my client, Peter Heath, farms on a tenanted farmstead over two miles away and has only limited land holding in and around the Montford Bridge area. Within the last 12 months, the bulk of this land holding has been compulsorily purchased by the council for the extension of the Lomache Industrial Estate. The small area of land which he is left with, to which this application relates, would in itself be unviable for farming purposes, given its limited acreage and remote location from the main farmstead. Consequently, the only viable ongoing use for this land is for equestrian purposes, hence the need for a building on the land to stable horses over the winter months. The officer report suggests that up to four loose boxes would be considered appropriate within this location. However, there will also be a need for storage of a horse box trailer and other associated tack, equipment and feed storage, and therefore purely for overall site security and the visual appearance of the area, it is necessary to secure these items within the building in order to achieve site security and avoid theft. My client would like me to emphasize the fact 
that there have been continuing ongoing problems with theft and vandalism around this area over a number of years and therefore this real issue must be addressed in the design of the building. All that stated, comments are noted regarding the overall height of the building within the officer report and in order to address these legitimate concerns then my client acknowledges that the height of the building could be reduced by one metre in order to reduce the overall scale and impact of the building within the broader landscape. To assist, the proposed siting has been chosen carefully, being located adjacent to the existing foam mast with a treed backdrop to the motorway embankment to the rear at a higher level. I can also confirm that the proposed use of the facility would be for private use and not for any form of business use or equestrian events. If members are willing to support the proposal, then the reduced scale of the building could be controlled by the imposition of an appropriately worded condition. On behalf of my client, and I should like to thank you for providing me with the opportunity to address you this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kinder. Uh, Catherine, do you want to come in and obviously just answer, uh, you know, come in with any comments you have before I bring colleagues in? Yes, of, of course, Chair. Um, through through you, um, there are exceptions to in the green belt policy for certain types of development. This is not one of them. Um, the issue here is, is, as Mr. Kinder said, it, it's it's the size of the building and the prominent location. It would undoubtedly harm the openness of the green belt, and that is national policy. Um, I hear what Mr Kinder is saying about amending the plans, but we have to deal with what's in front of us here. Um, obviously, um, the applicant is aware that it's, it's, it's on for a refusal. We've not received any amended plans, nor have we received sufficient justification for this scheme. Um, there's no very special circumstances that have been demonstrated um, that would outweigh the harm, and therefore it would be against um, both local and national policy to allow this. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Colleagues, Councillor Iqbal, Councillor Hanif, do you want to say anything? No, um, <clears throat> to be honest, I don't know much about uh, <coughs> Green Belt and, and uh, obviously the countryside. So, obviously, I'll be following uh, uh, officers' guidance. Yeah, Chair? Yeah. yeah, obviously, I have to agree with you, Councillor. I think, obviously, listening to Catherine and obviously reading the final conclusion, um, obviously, it's down for refusal. Um, Councillor Yaswick, do you want to say anything? Uh, just a question, uh, Chair. I know uh, Catherine's touched upon this point about amended plans. I know we haven't got the amended plans, but if there were the amended plans, as Mr Kinder suggested, uh, can you guide us as to what the position would be then if, if there was to be this condition? Um, through, through you, Chair, we, we haven't got any plans to, to assess. Yes. Um, off, off the top of my head, I'm not sure that a metre off the heart would be so significant um, as to alter our recommendation. Um, if they wish to resubmit after we've made a decision, then obviously they are entitled to do that. Yeah. So, is that OK, Councillor Iqbal? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. So, we've got... Um, Obviously, uh, recommendation of refusal. Uh, would anybody like to move and second that, or is anybody in favour of approval? <coughs> Propose uh, refusal, Chair. Yeah. I'll second that, Chair. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm more than happy to support the uh, recommendation of refusal. So that's unanimous. So all three councillors refuse. Ms. Kinder, the application has been refused. Thank you very much for your time. The next item on the agenda is um, erection of a two-storey side extension and roof, roof lift at 45 Kings Causeway, Briarfield. Um, we do have a speaker, but Mr Usman Saeed doesn't want to speak at the moment, I don't think. Um, obviously, this is this has been in, um, this went in quite a while ago, and I know I've been looking at it quite closely. And I know originally when the application went in, uh, the planning officer wasn't happy with quite a few things. However, the architect and the applicant have worked quite closely and rigorously with, with the case officer, Charlotte, and obviously 
took on board everything what she's recommended. And obviously now the recommendation for the planning application is to approve this application. Um, and I'm more than happy to move to approve this application. Um, Councillor Yaswick, by Councillor Hanif, do you want to say anything? No, 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 no. Second that, Chair. Yeah. Councillor yeah. Iqbal. Yeah, so we're yeah, moving. Yeah, so we're moving approval for um, the two-story side extension and roof lift at Four Five Kings Causeway. That's unanimous, all three in favour. Um, so, Mr. Mr. Said, you don't need to speak. The application has been approved. Thank you very much for your time. The next item is change of use from chemist. Use class one to hot food takeaway at the direct, uh, direction of a flu to rear at 19A Chapel Street. Um, obviously, it's down here. This used to be the uh, chemist on the corner. Obviously, the chemist has closed now, and obviously, it's coming to us. Um, I know it's in a residential area. However, I think LCC. I've said. I mean, consider the information. They're more than happy. Uh, there's been no public response and also um, the timing um, obviously is um, was quite important and I think the timing that's been uh, submitted and approved by the planning officer is 9am to 10pm. Catherine, is, is there, obviously once this opens and everything, will there be, will we, I know it's COVID and everything, but will there be uh, monitored or anything of the t opening times, you know, because obviously it is in it is in a residential area. Um, through through you, chair. Um, if we receive complaints that they are opening beyond those those yeah. times that are conditioned, then yes, yeah. we will investigate. Um, and if they require to extend those hours, then um, you will be aware of that application. No problem, thank you. Yeah, so I'm happy. Obviously, it's down for. For approval, I'm happy to move approval. Yeah, second the chair. Yeah, Councillor Iqbal. Yeah, chair. I read the report. Um, I, to be honest, I was surprised it was done for uh, approval, um, and I'm also surprised that LCC have said that they've got no high raise issues. I know it's a residential area, um, and I'm not sure how LCC reached these decisions. Sometimes, to be quite honest, because we see some very perverse decisions by uh, LCC sometimes. But it, it is what it is. But I, I, I firstly, um, I'm not sure it's a planning issue, but having a, another takeaway in, in, the, in Bradfield we don't need. But secondly, it's in the middle of a residential area, as you've said. Yeah. I think parking's going to be an issue. Because um, uh, we, uh, we have, you see, that's, sorry, Councillor, but I was surprised, like I've said myself, because... There has been numerous accidents on the corner there as mm, well. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, Chair, um, I, I think I'm going to be abstaining from this uh, from this vote. Yeah. Do you want to say anything, Catherine, about that? The LCC, you know, regarding parking. I know we can't refuse it on parking because I remember last month you said we couldn't refuse anything on parking. Well, I, th I think in terms of residential, it's more difficult to refuse. For commercial, we've got to look at the fallback position, which is the fact it's an existing commercial use um, in, in a residential area and you know it, what else would it be used for other than other than residential so we have to consider that um, and what the fallback position from that is and obviously LCC have looked at it um, and in terms of, of the same amount of use they're thinking that, that would be acceptable. Right no problem so obviously I've moved it and Councillor Neve seconded it uh, and Councillor Yasser has uh, abstained on that. So that's obviously approved. Thank you. Um, there's no planning appeals at the moment. Item 7, enforcement. Are we happy to move that? Not at all. Yeah, thank you very much. Item 8 is capital programme, which is obviously for information for colleagues. Can I just suggest something, Chair, on the capital programme? Yeah. On, it, on item nine, <clears throat> on, on, on page two, it talks about grid bins. Yeah. yeah. And we've got £627 in there, yes? Yeah. Now, obviously, Bradford Town Council, uh, uh, obviously, the last time is paying for all the grid bins and things like to be filled, yes? Yeah. <clears throat> and hopefully, we'll continue to do so. Yeah. And since this money is still standing there, can I propose that we give this £627 to the Town Council? 
so it contributes towards the greeting. Yeah, I'm more than happy to second that. Yeah, Councillor Iqbal, are you happy with that, yeah? Yeah, no objection, Chair. Yeah, so that's fine. Councillor Neves, yeah. um, as for the 627 to be transferred to Bradfield Town Council, because obviously Bradfield Town Council uh, have started to uh, root in the red bins, so obviously that can go towards some cost, costs of that. Thank you. Item 9, the planning of the proposed that the hand sanitation stations have been included in the grant funding agreement plan and expect to be purchased in the next two weeks. I have been granted delegate to to agree the best locations for the stay stations. Posters are also due to be printed shortly. We've Obviously, this has been going from quite a while now. I know Council Leaf was ill last month, so he couldn't obviously attend the uh, committee meeting. However, where do colleagues feel that these... Um, these hand sanitizer stations should be? Uh, Chair, can I just suggest that uh, since you've got the, uh, obviously, we, uh, <clears throat> two months ago, we gave you the powers. After yeah. the meeting, we went, we, when they purchased, we just kind of have a quick chat okay. <clears throat> between us, and you can just obviously tell the officers where they're going to be stationed. No problem. That's fine. Councillor Gabriel, are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine, Chair. That's fine. Thank you, Councillor Neef. Um, there's no uh, grant uh, applications for Bradfield Town Centre improvement grants. Item 11, um, two items have been asked for uh, for discussion. Toilets in the Town Centre, Councillor Neef. Yeah, yeah, Chair, thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> Chair, the toilets are becoming a pain in the butt for, uh, obviously, uh, <coughs> for the people of, uh, of Bradfield. Particularly, there's a lot of vandalism, the rats, uh, the noise, kids are gathering behind it, uh, you know, things like this. Yes. And yes. and uh, we've spent, as, as everybody knows, we've spent a lot of money obviously upgrading the town uh, uh, town hall, uh, uh, the, the playground, all, <clears throat> all the town centre. So what I'm actually looking at, I'm going to propose something, Chair, is that we ask uh, Panda Council to compulsory purchase uh, this property, okay? <clears throat> like they've done in other towns. Because we need, we can't have uh, damage, fighting, uh, you, you know, rats, you know, uh, young people, you, you know, pissing around in the town centre behind the uh, toilets, uh, uh, and and everything like this. So I, I've been quiet uh, for, from some officers, senior officers, and they said you can actually compulsory purchase it. So I'm proposing that we ask Penda Council to compulsory, compulsory purchase the toilets in the town centre chair. I'm I'm more than happy, but I, I want to bring Catherine in because I think uh, there has been a planning application that's gone in council and Eve. So I'm happy to second what you're saying, and I think Councillor Iqbal agrees with it as well. It's just obviously because there's planning in. I bring Catherine in first. Um, yes, chair. There has been an application submitted. Um, I'm not sure how far along it is. Um, but I think it's certainly been in for, for a few weeks now. Um, and that's for change of use and extensions to the building. Um, so um, we will be assessing it and, and coming to a recommendation on that um, probably in the next couple of weeks. Right, Chair, no question. Chair, question. Yeah. Can't we have these two things going in parallel? We obviously make a recommendation to the Council. Obviously, Catherine can do what she needs to do as planning. So uh, are they uh, obviously we can we can follow both processes? I don't know. Wayne, Catherine, can you advise anything on that? Um, through, through you, Chair, it is a separate procedure, obviously, but um, it, it will be something that the council would need to take into account um, because obviously if they get grant and permission, um, then then that will go with the with the property. Um, so it, it, it's it's outside my remit, I'm afraid, but it might be that somebody can advise um, in terms of that how it would affect it. Wayne, <coughs> is it possible for you to advise anything? Um, for you, chair, not 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 at this stage, but it may be something I can look into and get back to you, report yeah. on. Yes, please. Can, sir, can I yeah. can I can I still propose? Uh, compulsory purchase and from our committee goes to pen the council. Whatever yeah. then happens will happen, but at least the process can start, Chair. Yeah, no problem, Councillor. I'm happy to second that. Councillor Iqbal? Yeah, I'll second that, Chair. 
Yeah. On the on the issue of uh, a, a plot of land on uh, the corner of Glen uh, Glenway, Clear Road, that plot of land uh, ch- chair belongs to Pearl, and for the last twelve months and and longer, they've just been dumping rubbish on there. And uh, to be honest, the amount of complaints uh, I've received, and I've sent a video uh, to uh, obviously Council Iqbal as the chair of Pearl, and uh, Dean's got a copy of it as well. Uh, this this can't go on. You, you know, it's, 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 it's our town centre. People coming into Blyfield from Fence, coming into Nelson from Glenway. It looks absolutely mess. So we need, what we want to do is clean this up. And, and they give excuses, on upon excuses, upon excuses, yeah? So, Chair, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that, that, that we, we, from our committee, we write to Pearl, to the leader, to the chief of office, I say, this is unacceptable. It's, 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 it's in the heart of town. And it's becoming <laughs> this can't go on. Yeah, but, uh, sorry, I said it's becoming a dumping zone. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so we, I, I'm proposing we, we, we obviously tell uh, the three uh, uh, people that we, we this can this needs to stop. If they're going to build something on it, build something on it. But they can't be a dumping ground anymore. Yeah, I'm more than happy to support that. Councillor Iqbal. Yeah, fully support that, Chair. That's fine. So let's we'll go to the, the, the Pearl and the leader and the chief exit. Item 12, uh, Lane, is the exclusion of the public and press now. Yeah, if you could just all agree uh, that you're happy to exclude the public and press. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Okay, we'll let you know when the live stream has ended. <laughs> 